I think he's more of a political actor, so I'm going to qualify my answer to all of this. I think, I think if I had to take one of your two, I would say villain, and not for the, the typical reasons that we're hearing about in the media. I think that he and WikiLeaks is more villainous to the whole field of journalism, because here we see an attempt to provide a new form of social media. It's, un, uh, it's uh, unrefined, it's not contextualized, it's not given any of the, uh, the analysis or the, the real journalistic uh, work or merit that goes into a lot of the research that we see in, in the fourth estate. So my view on this is that uh, if I had to choose one of the two, I would say villain because he's really providing a tremendous disservice, I think, to the field of journalism generally. I think ultimately a lot of damage is being caused here because uh, without the discretion of analyzing the context of the, of the remarks, the field of public diplomacy is being damaged in a great way. Now on the one hand we might say there's a tremendous benefit to this in that we're getting unfiltered information and we see the real inner workings of global diplomacy. But the downside to this is that there's really nothing new here on the one hand. There isn't any information that's been shocking or has alerted the public or any government official to say something different is happening here. So we knew this was going on. But more importantly, uh, it's causing real damage to the field of global diplomacy, that we recognize that when diplomats go abroad, as the old adage goes, these are honest men being, uh, you know, being asked to, to, to lie for their government abroad. And uh, there's a lot of that that goes on. And the, 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 the issue of diplomacy is being lost in all of this because we're getting this unfiltered information. We're getting information from one side of the, the queue. We're not really understanding what's happening on the other side of the discussion. And again, that context is lost. I mean, we should be looking at Julian Assange very critically. We, we, should, we should be trying to understand where he's coming from, understand a little bit more of, of, of his overall uh, goals here. As I mentioned at the outset, I think he's really quite a political actor. I think he's quite uh, adept at playing the game politically. He's probably a better politician than most politicians are. He's certainly not a journalist. Uh, he's not a whistleblower. I don't see any of that. I see he's more of a, you know, a, uh, you know, he's overturning the carts and saying, you know, what's coming from all of this? What can we gather from it all? And he's very, uh, very good at attracting the attention and being the lightning rod for all of this. The real worry that I have about all of this is that the story, again, for the third time, has become about the story. Uh, when we look at the substance, we discover that you know, a lot of the facts are either gossip or there's really no substance there, or they're in fact factually incorrect if we really look at them and they're just being dumped on, on citizens and being told, you know, and citizens are being told to filter through all of this. So there's really not much there, there. And so ultimately, there hasn't been much of a contribution to uh, any of the topics or any of, any of the issues that we probably should know more about. And once again, it seems that the story has become about Assange and it's become about WikiLeaks, it's become about the, the actual phenomenon of this. Uh, and I guess in all of this, it may be that WikiLeaks is an example of a new development or a new phenomenon in social media and in the fourth estate more generally. It may be that this is how we continue to get, or, or increasingly, how we get our information unfiltered, not contextualized, uh, no analysis. And if that's the case, then I think that there's uh, really dark days ahead for journalism.